Hi there, and welcome to my demo of the accounts payable functionality in SAP Business One. This is Chelsea Lemaire with Enmore Technologies. If you can see my screen, I'm logged into SAP Business One. And for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to focus primarily in the purchasing AP module. So if you watch the AR demo, um, you'll, this will sound familiar, but all of the accounts payable purchasing AP documents follow what we call a base target relationship in the system, meaning that you know, a purchase order becomes a goods receipt PO when it's received in the warehouse. That goods receipt PO becomes an AP invoice once it's invoiced, um, and that AP invoice then becomes a uh, outgoing payment or a credit memo, or you know, there's other documents in the chain that can take place like returns, uh, landed cost documents, etc. I'm going to show you an example of this with AP invoice number 504. And I can see just from the remarks on this document that it started its life as a purchase quotation. That purchase quotation became a purchase order. That purchase order became a goods receipt PO. And then it became an AP invoice. And this AP invoice is open, which means it has not yet been paid. If I want to see a visual representation of this base target relationship, I can just right click and go to relationship map and it shows me the whole life cycle of this document. So I can see actually this all started as a based on a service call. So there was a field ticket created um, and because of this service call, we needed to purchase some things to fulfill the need of the service call. So service call uh, creates a purchase quotation. Purchase quotation becomes a purchase order. Purchase order becomes a goods receipt PO, which becomes an AP invoice that still needs to be paid. Okay, so that's the relationship map. When it comes to creating an AP invoice, the simplest way that this is done primarily um, by my clients in the past is you receive an AP invoice from a vendor either through email or uh, in the actual mail, and you need to enter that in the system. Typically, you have on the AP invoice, you have the vendor's name and you have the purchase order that it was based on. So if I'm an AP clerk, I'm going to come into the system and open up an AP invoice in add mode. And I'm going to select my vendor. I can either enter the vendor code, I can enter the vendor name, or I can select from the list. For this example, I'm going to say the invoice was from CTI Computers. And I have the purchase order number on the invoice. So I want to see if we have received the items from that purchase order. So I'm gonna say copy from a goods receipt PO, and this is gonna show me the list of all of the goods receiving documents in the system and the purchase orders that they're based on. So I'm gonna say, okay, this invoice says purchase order number 380, that's our purchase order number. So I can see that purchase order 380 was received in the system. And I'm going to use that to base my AP invoice on. When I choose it, it's going to say, do I want to draw all the data from that base PO, that base goods receipt? Yes, I do. And it pulls forward all the items from that purchase order that were received on that goods receipt document. I can make sure that everything matches the invoice. So I can see I've received three different items with different quantities and pricing. If there has been a price change at some point, you can make that update or you can coordinate with purchasing um, the operations team to determine why the price has changed, et cetera. But I can see my total amount here, my tax is being calculated. What is my posting date of the invoice? And I can even go to the attachments tab and actually attach the PDF of the document if I want so that anybody who looks at this AP invoice can see the PDF, the scanned in document of the actual vendor invoice. I'm gonna put the vendor reference number here. So this would be the vendor's invoice number. Let's say it's, and when I add this AP invoice, what the system is doing is it's essentially doing your three-way match for you. So. I can see that this AP invoice was based on a purchase order, a valid purchase order, that purchase order was received, and then it became an AP invoice. And I can see that relationship map here as well. And I can see that my AP invoice has an attachment, 
meaning I've attached the actual physical vendor invoice to this API invoice in the system. Similar, similarly, on the AP side, um, there is a aging report available. So if you want to use the aging report to view your open AP balances, I'm going to select a branch because there are branches set up in this database. Again, I can age by different buckets depending on what you want. <clears throat> and this shows me my full AP aging balance. I can collapse all. You. Fit column width. I can see my totals in my different brackets. And again, I can export to Excel, I can export to PDF, I can expand all and drill in and see, you know, what was this invoice and when was it supposed to be paid? Why hasn't it been paid, et cetera? I can do all that kind of research directly from this report. Okay. When it's time to pay the vendors, that will be done in the banking module. So the outgoing payments is where the AP process happens. So if I wanna create a outgoing payment for a single vendor, so I'm doing this one at a time, I'm gonna open up an outgoing payment and I want to make a payment to my vendor SMD Technologies. That can show me, okay, I've got four open invoices for this vendor. And for whatever reason, I only want to pay this invoice and this invoice. I'm ready to pay those. I tell the system how I'm going to pay. So how am I paying them? Check, bank transfer, credit card, or cash. I'm going to say for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to do a bank transfer. And this is saying, I've already released the payment at the bank. Um, I'm just recording it as paid in the system. So I did it today. What's my bank reference number? Copy balance due, which allows me to pull the total amount that's due here. And I'm going to change the GL account. So I don't want to put it in my savings. I don't want to say it came out of my savings. It came out of my checking account. Okay. When I add this outgoing payment, it records that payment into the system. Both of these invoices are now closed because they've been fully paid and that total amount has been reconciled to the vendor account. So it's no longer on your open AP balance. So that's creating outgoing payments, you know, one, one vendor at a time. The other option on the AP side is to use the payment wizard. And this is the way that most of my clients have done AP in the past. This is how you can do your weekly AP payment runs. I'm gonna start a new payment run. And I'm gonna say, this is an outgoing payment and I'm gonna use the payment wizard to generate my checks. So I'm gonna cut multiple checks based on what invoices are due and the parameters that I set. Um, I can also use the payment wizard to generate a bank transfer payment, outgoing payment. Um, this can be used to generate a bank file that goes to the bank that says, um, you know, release these funds for payment. It can also be used to mass record the fact that I paid all of these vendors uh, by bank transfer at once, instead of having to use the outgoing payment to do it one at a time. For this example, I'm just going to cut some checks using the payment wizard. I'm going to say I want to see all of my open AP for all these different vendors. Through due date of today. I want to pay out of this bank, my Bank of America bank account. And I can see, I can expand all and see these are all of the open AP invoices that I need to pay. I can pick and choose which ones I want to pay. Let's say I'm going to pay this 
these three invoices for that vendor. I'm going to pay that vendor. And I'm going to pay this vendor here. So based on my settings, it's going to cut three checks because it's three different vendors. Even though I'm paying multiple invoices, it's going to create a single check for each vendor. When I get to this option, I have the I have the option to either save recommendations. So this is used mostly by clients who um, want a approval process in their steps. So an AP clerk can run this payment wizard, save her recommendations, and then somebody else can come back in here, approve, and only they have the option to execute the payment run. So this is based on authorizations. You can, as, a, as an AP clerk, be able to run this wizard, save the recommendations, but not have the authorization to execute the payment run. That authority can lie with an AP manager or somebody who has that authorization. They come back, they say, yes, these recommendations look good, and they can choose to execute the payment run. So it generated, <clears throat> it gave me an error on these because the account currency is not the same as the document currency and the document amount is more than I have in my bank account. So you can see here, even when the system uh, gives you an error message, it's an exception report. So it tells you why it failed and what you need to do to fix that. But I can see that two payments were added, two checks were added. So these two checks to pay these two vendors were created. And now I, they're in the system and I can use the document printing option, checks for payment out of this bank account. And it says, okay, you have three checks that need to be printed. You've generated them in the system, but now we need to print them from the system. And I can use this wizard to actually print to my printer and then confirm the check numbers. So you have the option here, whatever your paper check stock is that's on your printer, you confirm that the next check number is the one that matches in the system. So then when they print, this check will be uh, 10,003, this check will be 10,004, this check will be 10,005, and you have one final step after you print to actually confirm that the checks that were printed match the check number of the actual check stock that you've printed from the printer. So that is a high level overview of the accounts payable functionality within SAP Business One. If you guys have any other questions or would like to see any other features, or functions of the AP process, uh, please let me know and I'd be happy to put together another demo for you guys. Thanks so much.